for the day, y'all. Listen, I want to talk about this uh this short uh series that's on um Shutter, and it's called Dead Wax. I stumbled up on it a few days ago, and I you know saw the concept of you know what it's gonna be about, and it piqued my interest because it reminded me of of this short film okay like way back in the early 2000s 2005 2006 they had the series on what channel it was i don't, I don't even remember i don't know was it on cinemax hbo showtime stars or whatever it was called the masters of horror and one of the movies was by john carpenter and it was called uh cigarette burns which is one of my favorites out that series and oh i will be talking about masters of horror i found i found both seasons well both of the good seasons i know they uh later on down the line they try to do one for network television and it ain't, it ain't paying out too well but dead wax and cigarette burns is similar um dead wax deals with this uh this chick and she's ta uh she's given the task to basically look for this uh exclusive one of a kind set of records right basically if you play them together it'll kill your motherfucking ass and drive you insane so it's along some of the lines of cigarette bars because cigarette bars had with this dude he got hired to find this movie that's supposedly never been motherfucker created but is if you look upon it, you either go, you know, you go insane or you die, kill yourself or whatever. So it's along those kind of lines. So it's um the dead wax is only like eight parts, and they not long, y'all. Cause like each part is like between twelve, thirteen minutes to not even thirty, thirty minutes. So, I just got through with the first one, and we are um, just going to talk about each one and tell you what happened, what pop off, and all that stuff. And if there's something that you might want to watch, you can get the feel of it, whatever, do it. Go, go on Shutter. Listen, Shutter is, I like, I'm glad I, I put my money in for Shutter, because Shutter, Shutter ain't disappointed me yet. Shutter's doing this thing. It's giving us good content, especially horror content. So, if y'all don't have it, go get it. Go try it out. I think they give you like a, a free, you know, free promo month or whatever. Or I heard they got a special like three months for $10. So, hell, give it a go. All right, we're going to start. So, it starts out with this old ass man, right? You can look and see certain parts of his motherfucking living room, whatever. You can tell he got corn. And so he's cutting on, basically, getting ready to play this record. Uh, it's a red, red vinyl record, old school vinyl, right? So the way he got it hitched up, I don't know. It, it looked like it looked like some out of old Frankenstein movie with them lamps, them on um, light bulbs, big elongated light bulbs, and you know and all that stuff. So homeboy, he get ready. He done put on the earphones and he get ready to cut on the motherfucking uh record player. And he leaned back, look like he about to a uh, bask in his bask in euphoria or some shit. And this thing, you know, boom, bow, you know, pow, surprise, bitch. This thing, you know, that motherfucker look like he look he look like somebody just concocted his ass out of motherfucking ash. All the moisture, all the tenderness, all the delicate meat or whatever dried up worse than motherfucking jerky, y'all. Gray and all. Still got the motherfucking headphones on, children. And everything. I don't even think he listened to one note of the motherfucker. So, the scene changes. There's this lady. This chick, her name, Etta Price. She's a vinyl tracker. So, that's her That's her judge. Her judge is to go find these obscure, one-of-a-kind, man-fucking 
vinyl records. For all the vinyl heads or the vinyl enthusiasts, the tr- vinyl traditionalists, because, you know, this motherfucker said that true music can't be, you know, enjoyed digitally and all that. You know, it only shows out its true form is only meant to be, you know, laid on vinyl, which I ain't gonna lie. Now, digital, you know, way it is now, like that HD and all that fucking shit, you know, stuff be sounding good, but it's just something about vinyl. Vinyl is his own beast. So, I can't knock the enthusiast, you know, for wanting to hold on to vinyl. So, Elder, she in bed, right? She get a box eight, right? She doing what it do, right? It's all, it look like she get ready to motherfucking uh, call on God. The record stop. And she said, flip the record. And her girl... It's down there like, what? She said, flip the record. So, homegirl can't bust one till, uh, till the song is over. She got to feel, that's how, that's how immersed, immersed she is with this goddamn vinyl shit, right? And I like, okay, so you can't bust one if the motherfucking uh, needle stop running. I guess so, you know, if that's your, you know, that's what gets you going. I can't, uh, I'm not one to judge, bitch. I like, I heard of motherfuckers hunching on goddamn car exhaust pipes, and that's the only way they could bust one. So, do you, bitch, I guess. So, they are finished, and the uh, girl was like, is it really that serious? And all, and Edda like, don't tell me how to bust one, bitch. And... <laughs> And so, the f- girlfriend is like, uh, when well, you gonna give her the answer? She wants to marry her. She wants to get married with her. And, you know, homegirl, she's like, she don't know. She have a second, nah, I ain't gonna say second thought. She just hesitant like a motherfucker. So, she's getting ready to go. She gotta do some work. So, we see her outside this house. And she got this uh, frequency radio looking thing. And she's working with the knives on the frequency shit basically to trick this dude's alarm system into, you know, cutting off so she could bust up in there and jack, jack some vinyl. Now, girl, this is supposed to be your living, right? So basically, you do thievish things. You're a thief. Baby. You, you motherfucking call so much noise busting up in that man's house. I'm like, girl, what kind of that? You know, you lucky. You lucky. Only God got your back and everything. Cause you know the motherfucker they been hurt your ass. Been hurt you. So she went found what she was looking for. There, there, bust her ass. She dropped, uh, getting out the motherfucking house, and she dropped the frequency thing, and it crashed, and she hauled ass. So we get to the scene from the when the show first began. We got a uh, forensics. They looking at this old dried up chalky corpse of that old white man with them headphones still on his head. So they basically like looking at each other like. Who finna do this? I ain't finna do that. I ain't finna do that either. Well, who gonna do it? So, white boy, his name is Lynn. Lynn Perry. And uh, his partner, uh, boss, a, super, uh, uh, a superior, whatever, is this uh, Asian dude. I forgot his name. So, soon as Lynn take the motherfucker, try to take the earphones off, right? Tell me why the head disconnected and fell. And uh, they're like, man, shit. Oh, listen, I'm sorry. I the motherfucker just put them headphones down so called and just walked out the fucking door. I wouldn't be able to do it. I, I just wouldn't be able to do it, y'all. So, while his partner is dealing with, you know, the head on the floor and the, uh, and all that bullshit. Lynn got that motherfucking uh, headphones, right? And you're looking to see, and you see it's still going, still playing. So he goes like a nut and 
put the ear- earphones to his ear, right? And I'm like, bro, what is you doing? Curiosity kills hella cats, bro. You don't seen what the fuck going on. That shit ain't normal. That motherfucker dried up. So I guess you want to die next. Pussy to put one half onto his ear, right? The, the effect is almost immediate. You can see just wash off his face. Pure panic. Fear, manic, whatever. Until, you know, it looked like he was about to go. I said, I started looking at him, see he was going to start getting paler and dry. His boss, well, his uh, partner, whatever, basically catches his attention. Said, if you uh if you break it, you pay for it. And so, these records, these certain records, you're going to see they got symbols and numbers all along the most, uh, the the innermost uh, ring around the vine, right? So you're going to have to pay attention to that because they keep showing it. They make sure you see it. So it's got to be something significant with that. So, you know, homeboy, he looking at, uh, Lynn looking at the motherfucking rucker and he all look like he uh mesmerized and shit. And so he go bag it up and there where we go. So Elda, she's gone to this uh old school rucker shop and she's getting ready to talk to uh the owner in the back. So they talk, money exchange hands, and she shows him this record. Basically, I think it is the record that she stole from that dude's house. One of a kind. Basically, the owner of the store, that was his band's record. He said they only pressed 50 copies and stuff like that. So she was able to find this record. And it, I think it was like a box of other vine or whatever. And pulled out a stack, you know, a stack of coin, you know, a, a stack couple of thousand i don't know was that fifty thousand or some shit i don't fucking know and so he had something for her had this record and all that and so they did they deal you know did they deal and she motherfucker walked on so she went to the to the house of the dude that uh hired her and he goes and he's looking through the uh through the stash, he's elated at one record. Right? So, the record he's elated at is the one that Homeboy, the owner of the darn record shop, had that he had gave found for, uh, for Etta. The cover of it is a circle with a triangle and a line going through with dots at each end. It's a symbol. It's a signal. I call it sigils. Sigils. That's what it looked like. Just like them little markings that's on the inner, inner ring of the record. So it means something. So the dude that hired her for the job, he said, you want to listen to it? And she like, yeah. She's a vinyl head. That what gets her off, as we already know. Hell, she couldn't bust one without without the song playing all the way. So they sitting back, they listening. It, it sound all right, whatever. You know, that ain't my judge. But... He tells her why they, you know, passing, you know, joints around and all that. Uh, these records, basically pressed by this dude named Lyle Litton. They'll call the records the, uh, uh, he said key records and he said, uh, Litton's Lacquer. And it's supposed to be, the way he's talking is four records, but it's three of them. Uh, they all put together. They all basically it's the same song, but I guess in different key ranges or whatever. And then there's one record that Lyle didn't um didn't get to finish pressing before he died in eighty seven, nineteen eighty seven. And it basically said when you put them all together, it's supposed to be a s experience you never fucking experienced before. And I guess it, I guess it brings the apocalypse or some shit. That's what I'm thinking. So it brings the apocalypse, huh? Everybody die. Everybody die, everybody kill each other, they gonna die. And so, homegirl is like, you know, if it was for money, if I had to choose between a whole lot of cash and me listening to something I ain't never heard before, she said she would say, fuck the money. She going for something she ain't never heard before. I like, bitch, really? And homeboy like, you for real? Even he was skeptical on that shit. He like, I guess he had a mindset like me. Hey, if I had the money, I could go buy the shit I ain't never heard before. So, you know, whatever. That's me. And so she said she's going to take the job. 
And um, so she's talking to her girl, and uh, the, uh, Ella tells her about you know this new gig she got. Homeboy gonna pay her ten times her normal rate. And um, the girlfriend is looking, going through like audio file threads and all, you know, websites and all that stuff, trying to find out what she's looking for. And she says she only saw this one post or whatever. And it says basically it talks about loud litton and these records and in bold letters do not by any circumstances play this shit. <laughs> You know, but we know these motherfuckers ain't gonna listen. Why should they? They don't, you know, motherfuckers don't listen. So, she's like, well, I need something to do. So, in her own way, in Ella's own way, she's getting ready to talk about them spending the rest of their lives together, them getting married. And she said, well, you know, I just can't be no housewife like that. Cause you know, she's like, "What you mean?" She said, "Do you know how much money I make?" That's when she, that was the girlfriend's response to the whole ten times my normal rate. That's he, that's what he um, gonna give me. So she like, "Are we talking about it like that?" But Ella don't say nothing. So there's one thing about Ella that strikes me about this girl. She walks through, look like she walks through the world aimlessly. It, it, she looked like she just barely there. She seemed like a ghost to her shell, of herself. You know what I'm saying? You know how someone look like if you just look at them, look like they'll fade away. That's how she, that's how she remind me her character in this. Like I'm, so I'm thinking like I wonder what happened to you to for you to have that aura about you or whatnot. So. We get to you know homeboy Lynn and his boss right. All about that record. Now, homeboy was supposed to, you know, bag and tag, but he didn't. Because he said, don't you think it's kind of odd and all that? What happened? And his partner like, listen, bro, uh, we ain't detectives. And so he have him go get some coffee. So Lynn goes to get some coffee. But while he's trying to fix the coffee... Weird shit started happen. Seems like he's having an out of body experience. Seems like he getting motherfucking discombobulated. Uh, he looking at his hands. Look like he see his veins, but his veins are are white, like light and fire and all that shit. He looked to the door, and the door is doing this three D thing and all that, and he sees a silhouette of a man. It looks like the silhouette of the man that died in the beginning of the episode. So, while this is going on, his partner is, you know, bagging and tagging. Now, he's looking at the record, and he sees those numbers while he's documenting everything. And so, next thing you know, laying on the floor, he done passed out. And he's still going to ya ya ya. He gets up, walks back to his office, y'all. Tell me why it ain't nothing but blood, meat, uh, meat, and all kind of viscera all over the motherfucking office. And this is me looking like, how the fuck that happened? They had a record player in there? How that happened? Because it shows the dude, basically, he done bagged and tagged that motherfucking app. So that album just burst through the bag, I'm guessing. I'm not for sure. I'm like, maybe maybe something popped off when he typed in them numbers, documented them numbers, and wrote down them uh, sig sigils and all that shit. I don't know. But that's how it end off. This is the first episode, y'all. A Dead Wax. I'm digging it. I like it. It's straight. I'm going to check out the second one, and we're going to see. We're going to keep this momentum. You're going to see we're going to keep this momentum.